Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode in the Econobox Garage. All right, you can see I've got the car sitting on the ground on its own wheels. The lugs are all tightened up. The brakes are bled. You can see a windshield washer fluid in. Still have to hook up some vent hoses on the uh, carbs and an overflow hose on the radiator. So I'll get those shortly and get those put in. Now before I start it, I'm going to do an electrical check. Um, I have the positive cable hooked up. I still have to hook up uh, these two wires here. This is the uh, wire that provides power to the dashboard and this is the wire that goes to the horn relay that I sh showed you earlier. For the negative post I have a uh, shut off or cut off so you screw this down and it makes the connection and gets everything going and then to basically shut the car down you just turn that and it breaks the connection. So as long as that's kept clean in theory that will I'll look after it. And as I've mentioned earlier also, I uh, have converted the car to negative ground. And I did order the little sticker uh, for that. And to be honest, I'm a bit nervous about hooking up the electrical for the first time. But I, I'm pretty sure, I'm sure we'll be okay. So my, my plan is uh, to hook up the, I'll get those two little wires hooked to the positive post. I'll put the terminal on for the negative. Then I'll turn the, the power on to the car. Then I'll check all the lights and make sure like the signal lights are working, park lights, headlights, all that kind of stuff, um, the dash lights, and go from there. Okay, I've got the positive wires hooked up now. So now I'm going to hook up the negative and start checking lights. Now, just as a precaution, I think I might be being a little bit over cautious here. I'm going to pull the fuse out for the the horn uh, just for now. Okay, so I've made sure that this is off. Um, I've made sure that this connection is really tight um, and the same with the ground connection here. So let's get this uh, into place here. So that's still off. Now in keeping with the Econo side of the project, uh, the battery is not a brand new one. It's actually a rebuilt one uh, from a, a local company. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to their store in the description below. Okay, so I have the keys out of the ignition. Nothing is turned on. So let's go and hook this up. So far so good. I don't see any sparking or hear any noises that shouldn't be there. So now I'm going to check the lights. Something not quite right here, so I'll have to check the wiring on that one. Turn off all those lights. Now to check signal lights and the like, I'm going to turn the ignition on. That's a good sign. The fuel, I can hear the fuel pump. Uh, no signal lights. Okay. 
Your pump hasn't stopped yet, so I'm going to have to check. Other than, let's see what else, oh, we can try the dash lights. Okay. What's going on with those back lights? The initial startup didn't go so well. I don't have signal lights. A couple of my lights on the back aren't quite right. And I don't know if you can see this, but my wires here started to get very hot. So I'm just going to do a bit of looking into which wires are what here. Uh, this connection got very hot here. Come on, these wires are. Yeah, so I'm going to have to check into that. I wonder if there's problems at the back. Because those are melted together a little bit there. All right, so time for some research. Um, I have turned uh, the disconnect is disconnected. So there's no power going anywhere. Well, I had a bit of a setback and that's my own fault. I don't know if you can see it back here, but there's some bare wire on the red, coming off the red there. Uh, what happened is I actually connected the hot wire for the harness to the ground connection on the license plate light. And of course, when I turned the power on, that heated up and melted all the insulation. Fortunately, I caught it in good time. So I'm just gonna repair that bit of the harness there uh, and then hook it up correctly this time and then uh, get back to getting the car moving. Uh, one other thing I discovered, there's a switch for the signal light wasn't the correct one. I just found a generic three position switch uh, in my assortment of electrical goodies. So I'll use that for now. And I have a proper uh, bug eye switch um, on the way. Well, I've replaced the burnt section of wire uh, inside the car we had to go back about a foot or so uh, to get to where none of the uh, where none of the insulation was damaged and I've double checked and triple checked that I now have the red wire going to the correct terminal on the license plate light and the ground going to the correct terminal on the license plate light so we'll chalk that one up for experience I'll get the license the bulbs in and the cover back on and then get back to checking the rest of the harness Okay, one of the last things to do on the electrical is to polarize the generator. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One is it's been sitting idle for so long, it's lost whatever little magnetic charge is in there. And secondly, I've switched the car from positive ground to negative ground. Now I'm following a video from Moss Motors, and I'll put a link to that video in the description below. But the idea is you just use a jumper. Now this one's kind of long, but it's what I have. So we connect to the battery terminal, which is this uh, A terminal on the Lucas regulator, and then just briefly tap the F terminal, which is connected to the field on the generator itself. And you just have to do that a couple of times, and the job is done. So I'm going to hold it on the battery terminal, and then just briefly spark it over to the field terminal, and that's it. So before I add the coolant, I'm going to make sure all my hose clamps are tightened up. Uh, there's 
There's two on the little bypass hose that goes underneath the thermostat housing here. There's two on the upper radiator hose. Uh, there's one way down at the bottom on the bottom of the radiator. And there's a couple down in here. And there's two clamps on the return line from the heater box. And there's two on the supply line to the heater box. So I'll get those all tightened up, then I'll add the coolant, and then we can get to uh, starting. Oh, I've got the radiator filled up. I'm just using some generic antifreeze uh, for now, and I'm sure I'll have to top that up once the engine gets running. So I'll put the cap on. Tighten that up. And move on to the next step. Well, for some reason, we've got some kind of leak. I've checked all my clamps and that, and it seems to be coming from the side of the block here. So what I'm going to do, unfortunately, is I'm going to have to pop the carbs off and move the heat shield to see if I can see where the water is coming from. Well, after a bit of investigation, it turns out the water pump bolts were actually a, not as snug as they needed to be. At first, I thought it was all it was a couple of the hose clamps I missed. But now that's all tightened up, the leak has stopped, radiator's filled back up, and I believe we're good to go. So I'll get the exhaust, or I'll get the uh, heat shield and carbs all back in place, and then we can start moving forward again. Well, now that I have uh, the coolant in and water, tump, water pump tightened up, I'm going to pull the spark plugs and then just crank the engine over to make sure that we get some oil pressure. After that, I'll put the plugs back in, check all my connections, and give it its first attempt to start. Well, you can see I have the spark plugs out now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just turn the engine over. One of the little quirks of the Bug Eyes electrical system is you don't have to turn anything on to turn the engine over because it's hooked directly to the battery and it's just a mechanical switch right down here, which I've shown you in an earlier video. Uh, so what I'll do, so the goal is for this little step is to get the engine turning over and to get some oil pressure, hopefully. So uh, let's swing around to the driver's seat and see what we can do. Right, so I'm just going to pull the starter knob. Engine's turning over. And we'll wait to see if we get some oil pressure. There we go. So now that we've reached that milestone, I can put the plugs back in and then we can actually try and start it. Okay, the spark plugs are back in and a static timing is set. I know there's fuel at the carburetors, so I'm going to go turn the ignition on and see if we can get this running under its own power.
it's a little noisy, but you see I've got good oil pressure. I have to wait and see when the water temperature starts to come up. And I've got to adjust the idle down, of course. Okay, we have oil pressure and we have water temperature. with how that's going so far. So now it's just a matter of setting timing, tuning the carburetors, and we're ready to go. As you can imagine, this is a huge milestone for this project. That's the first time there's been an engine running in that car for over 40 years, and I'm quite excited to get it on the road. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to share it with your friends, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget that little bell icon. Click on that and you'll get notified when the next video comes out. And that next video, I hope to be driving the car. Thanks again to everybody that supported the channel, either through super thanks or commenting, subscribing, or picking up merchandise such as this t-shirt. Uh, there's hats and mugs and a couple of other items there in the store as well. If you'd like to get a hold of me directly, you can do so at the email address I'll put at the bottom of the screen and that will be in the description below as well. My name is Ian. This is the Econobox Garage. We'll see you next time.